One way to simplify the analysis of circuits is to develop an equivalent circuit. That is to replace part of the circuit with a simpler but equivalent circuit. And the underlying basis for this is that the IV characteristics at a specific pair of terminals are equivalent or the same. So in order to analyze the equivalent circuit, we need to make sure that the terminals for a particular pair of terminals, that it has the same IV characteristics, and that is that we can say that the circuits are equivalent. Let's go through some simple examples with series and parallel circuits. So here we have an R1 in series with R2. We have a s rest of the circuit shown here, and we have terminals A and B. And we want to replace this circuit with an equivalent circuit across a terminals B, A and B. So what we note here is that this circuit, this part of the circuit, R1 and R2, is connected in series. And we know that a current connected in series have the same current. So that is, we will start off with a KVL starting at this point, node B, go around here with this loop, and end up at B. So a voltage rise V is equal to a voltage drop across R1 and a voltage drop across R2. So we get V1 plus V2. So the sum of the voltage rise is equal to the sum of the voltage drops. Now we note that the current around this loop is I, so we can use Ohm's law, I R1 for V1 plus I R2 for V2, factor out the I, and we have R1 plus R2. Well, this is just Ohm's law, and we can replace this series connection of R1 and R2 with an equivalent resistance equal to REQ. And that's what we did here on the circuit diagram or schematic shown on the right here. So we can take this series of R1 and R2 and replace it with an equivalent of R1 plus R2. So that's how we generate equivalent resistance associated with this series connection. So when you look at the terminals, let's say we're looking in this here, we note we have a certain voltage and a current going through this part of the circuit across A and B. And when I look at this diagram in the right, I have the same, between terminals A and B, the same voltage and current characteristics associated with this equivalent resistance. Same current, except my R equivalent consists of one resistor, R, which is the sum of resistor 1 and resistor 2. So that's what we mean by equivalent resistance when the pair of terminals, in this case terminals A and B, have the same I, V characteristics. So these circuits are equivalent when you look at the terminals across A and B in terms of the IV characteristics. Now let's look at an example associated with a parallel connection. Here we have terminals A and B and connected to terminals A and B is a parallel pair of conductances or resistance. Again, we recall that G1 is equal to 1 over R1 and G2 is equal to 1 over R2. We want to replace this circuit between terminals A and B on the right with an equivalent circuit. In this case, we want to replace it with equivalent resistance. So using the relationship of KCL, and we note that, and also KVL, we note that the voltage across the parallel is constant. So across G1 we have V and across G2 we have V. So using KCL we have I, sum of the currents in, is equal to the sum of the currents out, which in this case is I1 plus I2. Now we replace this with a uh, voltage in terms of voltages so we have G1 V1 plus G2 V2. Well that's equal to G1 since V1 and V2 is equal to V 
we can factor that out and we have g1 plus g2 times v but this is just ohm's law so we we can replace this sum of conductances with g equivalent okay so here the diagram on the right will replace g equivalent with g1 plus g2 but we know let's put it in terms of r equivalent in which we have r1 r2 over r1 plus r2 that's the result and we can see that when we uh, add these two conductances we get 1 over r equivalent is equal to 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 put that in the common denominator r1 plus times r2 and then r1 we have r2 on top right there plus r1 taking the inverse we have r or reciprocal r equivalent becomes r1 divided times r2 divided by r1 plus r2 and we see here that it's the product of the two resistances in parallel divided by the sum of the two resistances and let's note a special case where we equate r1 equal r2 with the resistance r in other words the resistance is equal to both of these parallel resistance but that just reduces to r1 squared over to R1. Clean this up. So that's just 2 R1 or R squared over 2 R which is just equal to R over 2 or half the resistance. So what you should note from this equivalent resistance that when you have two resistors in parallel it's always smaller than the either of the two resistances. It's always smaller than that. By noting that when we equate these two resistors R, it's half the value, the equivalent resistance for this. So that kind of makes sense because when a current goes into this node here at node A, since the resistors are equal between these two, then half the current goes here and half the current goes to G2. So, in summary, for this equivalent resistance for parallel connections, we have G1 and G2 connected in parallel across terminals A and B, and we would replace it as the sum of those two conductances, or our equivalent becomes the product of those two resistors divided by the sum. So let's look at an example associated with this. Here we have R1 connected to a parallel connection of R2 and R3, and we're going to try to transfer that into an equivalent resistance circuit. So here let's look at REQ2. We see that when we look at this point between terminals C and D that R2 is in parallel with R3. And one way to symbolize that is saying that R2 we have the parallel sign given as shown in parallel with R3. In parallel with R3 which as we know we found on the earlier uh, video that it's just the product of those two resistors divided by the sum. Okay, so R2 times R3 divided by R2 plus R3. So we can replace this with REQ2. Okay, so this is REQ2. REQ2. Now, when you look across terminals A and B we can replace REQ1 shown here as now is the sum between R1 and REQ2 so R1 plus REQ2 and if you want to put the evaluation of R1 plus REQ2 where we replace REQ2 with R2 times R3 divided by R2 plus R3 here we replaced R2 and R3, this parallel combination, with this REQ2 equivalent shown here. And now looking at terminals A and B, we see it's the sum between R1 plus REQ2.